Have you ever wondered why God gave the law in the first place if he would later need to send Jesus to get rid of that same law that he had given? My name is Doug Hamp, and we're going to take a look at that question in this Bible Buzz. We're going to look at the passage in John 117 where it says in the New King James, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now, if you've been like me, you might have heard a sermon or two about how there was law, but now there's grace. And there's this huge contrast between the two. This idea that, you know, back in the day, it was all about law. But now that Jesus came, we have grace and truth and aren't we lucky to not have to have been around before when it was all about law and it was judgment it was tough and this is one of those passages that people use to continue this idea and what they do is they say look law was given through Moses but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ now I want to take you through this uh, this really quick study here just to show you that it may not be the way that we were presented. Things are not always as they seem. Let's take a look here. First thing, it's pretty obvious. If you're reading a New King James Bible, you should be able to see that the word but is in italics. That means it's not actually in the text. All right, that's the first thing to really understand. The next thing is the word given. All right, so first of all, it's not Moses' law but it's the law that was given through Moses. Just as if somebody gives a, a dictates a letter, let's say a doctor is dictating a letter, then the transcriptionist, the secretary, is going to take that recording and is going, then going to type it out. So it's not that transcriptionist that wrote the letter, it's the doctor that wrote the letter. The transcriptionist is simply acting as the secretary to put that into actual form and so this is very important the word given God is the one who gave the law and he used Moses as the agent or the secretary to do that well let's now take a look at the Greek to really better understand notice how I remember when I said that the word but is not in the text well when we go and take a look at the Greek what we see here is that that word is completely missing so there's really two words in Greek that can mean but. One is de, and the other is ala. And neither of those is in our text. And it should be right here. Okay, it says, for the law was given, so here's the word was given, edothe, was given through dia, moseos. All right, so it was given through Moses. And then we should have the word but in here, but it's not. It's absent. There's nothing there. So you could maybe put a colon or a semicolon there because it just continues a thought. And it says grace, the grace, and the truth through Jesus Christ. And now this is an important word, agenito. What is this word? Where is it coming from? It's actually from the Greek word ginomai. And it doesn't mean come. You see this word as it translated in English, came, that's incorrect. That's not what it means. The actual word is, as I said, from ginomai. Let me show you again, or ginomai is the actual correct pronunciation there. And let's take a look here. I'm looking at the, uh, the Bedag Dictionary. This is one of the foremost lexicons that are out there. And let's see here. I had this thing all pulled up. <laughs> Don't know where it went. It's there somewhere. So, but the, the word ginome, it, it, what it does is it's really, it means to come into being through process or birth or natural production to be born, to be produced. All right. So again, to come into being, that's what the word actually means. It doesn't mean come. It more, it's more like become, to come into existence, to be made, created, manufactured, be performed, etc. And as we go through and we take a look at the, these different definitions, you're going to see that come is not one of those words. That would be the word erhome, but that's, this is not the word that we have. 
So it come into being as an event or phenomenon, as a, from a point of origin, arise, come about, develop, okay? And we keep on going to occur as process or result to happen, take place, etc. To experience a change in nature, all right? So uh, to make a change of location in space or to move, all right? So there's something kind of interesting that is going in the text. Let's take a look at that again so we can get a better idea of what is actually happening. So again, here's our text and it says that for law, the law was given through Moses that was given by God, of course, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So again, it's not that they came through Jesus Christ, it's that they, they became through Jesus Christ. They had their origin through Jesus Christ. Well, we're told that Jesus is the one who was there in the beginning. This is what John starts his whole book with. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God all things were made through him and without him nothing was made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men all right so jesus is the source of all things right and and he was there in the beginning with the father so when we think about this grace and truth originating with Jesus Christ it's not saying that look for a while there was law but now we have grace and truth grace and truth were always there let's take a look at Exodus Exodus chapter 34 very important passage because here God comes by Yehovah comes by and it says the Lord Yehovah passed before him and proclaimed the Lord the Lord God merciful and gracious long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth all right so we know that yehovah the one who gave the law at mount sinai it was given through moses but god is the one who gave the law and he says that he is merciful and gracious long suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty, etc. So this is the one with whom mercy and grace and truth originated. So would we go back to our text there in John 117? It's not that we have a new deal, that Jesus is bringing some kind of a new dispensation or a new era. John is simply making the point that, look, the law that God gave, that God who declared himself to be merciful and gracious, that was given by way of, through the agent of Moses, and grace and truth had their origin through Jesus. So nothing has changed. It's not saying that now there's a new deal, there's a new dispensation, not at all. This should not be used as a dichotomy between the law on the one hand and grace on the other God's grace has always been intimately involved with his law and his law has always been in intimately involved with his grace and believe it or not the law is not something that was against us the law is there like guardrails there to help us the laws give us a blueprint for life on how we can live a successful life and when we do mess up when we do blow it and we miss the mark then there is grace there's abundant grace to help us but the law yes like a schoolmaster is there to help us to do the right thing and if we mess up then yes God extends his grace and it has been that way since the beginning I hope this Bible Buzz has helped you to understand this passage a little bit better, that there's not a dichotomy between law and grace, but they go hand in hand, they go together, and John 1.17 is not marking the distinction between two different dispensations and two different eras, but it's talking about one and the same thing.
Thanks for joining me. Till next time, stay in the Bible.